I don't like Priuses. Let's get them. Ah, Prius. We gotta have some GS content mixed in with the EP3 project car content. The EP3 versus this car are on completely different ends of the spectrum. This is a heavy car with double the cylinders and a manual that was never intended to be in it, as you can see. Supercharged. And when I go from one car to the next, it's not even close. It's just like getting in a completely different vehicle, which it is. But each has its own pros and cons. I get a ton of questions about going manual on this chassis whether you have a GS300, an SC, a GS400, 430, I get tons of questions each week about going manual. I can't answer for you if it's worth it. I just, I can't tell you if converting it to manual, but I can tell you this. The AR5 transmission, which is what I run, it's smooth and it notch, it's, it's like notchy into place. Whereas the EP3 transmission, it's just, a whole different feel to that transmission. Make sure you check out my manual swap series. I've got a lot of cool videos in there, including driving impressions. And then I also have later on the five things I hate about a manual swap, my manual swap. I have that as well because there are some things I don't like. If I could go back in time, a lot of people ask me, hey man, was that worth it? Like, was your manual swap worth it? How much was it? All that stuff. I answer all that in my manual swap series. I can't tell you if it was worth it. You need to figure that out on your own. I can't say yes, it's worth it or no, it's not. If I could go back in time and the car didn't have a transmission that was slipping at the time, I probably would have, and I didn't have YouTube, I probably would have sold the car and got a purpose-built vehicle knowing what I know now. I probably would have got something that came from the factory with a manual transmission and then built that car. I probably would have enjoyed like a G37 sedan with a six speed in it, something like that. So I'm, I'm glad I went with it, but you can, you're the only one that can answer the question for you. Your car is gonna be out of commission for like two to three weeks. So keep that in mind. If you're if you live in an apartment, this is going to be pretty tough for you to pull off. But I do like it. It's a lot more fun to drive this car. I don't do a ton of city driving in it. It's a lot of farm road stuff like I'm on right now, so that makes it actually pretty enjoyable and not super annoying. If I had to drive this thing and stop and go traffic all the time, it would be annoying. I can tell you that. project car this shifter is just the weirdest thing ever we're going to try to upgrade a couple things on the shifter the bushings as they call it in some countries the bushes they're going to go to solid mount they're mounted inside here and they're going to replace the worn out rubber open the hood go into the transmission on or on top of it and replace the shifter mechanism bushings these go on the transmission these go on the shift base if you're going to go for these first you can see them right down in there and so the airbox assembly has got to come out. This is what we're working with. We're gonna take this and this off. And then this will come right out like that. You might wanna try not to destroy it in case you don't like the solid mount. So that comes out and that's what it looks like. So I put the bushing on first like that and then that slides over it, you've got this, and then you're gonna put the locking clip that goes in through that hole right there to hold it in place. Squeeze it, it clips right on. And there you go, there it is.
done. You guys can see how the gear shift works. Just run it through various gears. Next up, we have these shift mount bushings. It's what we call them, I guess, in America. Solid, unlike the OEM rubber ones. To get to those, if you have the stock shifter, you're just gonna pull down and then you're gonna unscrew it. Next, you gotta get this panel off. US market EP3s will have a cover here typically. So you can put your finger in there and then you just pull. Don't yank the whole thing off because you got your hazard light plug back here. Unplug that and then this whole thing should just slip off. These are bolts, there's four of them. This one's the hardest one to get to. Underneath those bolts are the OEM rubber mounts. You're gonna need probably stuff like this, a swivel, 3 8 swivel. The last one, and yes, the swivel helps a ton. Now the whole thing moves, and we should be able to get these bushings off and out. Insert in there, and you should really have a magnet ready, because this is what it looks like. And you can see the reason you can't pull that through is because it has a flared end. So the flared end goes on bottom. That's why I was trying to pull it up through that grommet, and it wouldn't. We're gonna sandwich it. So that comes off right there. And it was mounted like that. We'll grab it properly. Pops right out. This lower right one is the hardest one. Here's what I found. Take a razor blade and cut off that top part of the grommet. And then when you pull this, it'll slide out. See how that's sliding out there? So this is the way you can do it. And now I'll just slide that out. So they're all out now. And once they're all out, then you can get to work on it. We're gonna slide that in there like that and get it threaded and started. And once we get it threaded and started, then we'll do the rest. Everything is loosely installed, so you can see how loose it is. Now, we'll get it all fitted and tightened and torqued, and the torque value is pretty high. So these spring clips, I wanna give you guys a little hint here. The best thing to do is to get it mounted up on this piece first, and then you just snap this pivot right in. It goes right through the middle. Here's a little demo. I got it on first. You just need to line this thing up and pull it towards you. It snaps right on. What are my initial impressions of these upgraded shifter bushings and base mount bushings? A little more positive engagement, and I think that has to do with the trans mount bushings. That feels pretty good. I mean, for the price, it wasn't bad. Something like $30 total for all of these. Reverse feels great definitely made a difference in the firmness okay so now we'll take it on some farm roads and row it through the gears and see what we think downshifts nice and firm positive engagement I'm gonna leave it in third around this corner Let's see if we can catch this Mustang man this needs a turbo Back here, Mustang boy. <laughs> He's laughing. He's having a good time. Good for you. Yeah, laugh it up. Enjoy your night. some upcoming episodes. I'm gonna get into exhaust welding a little bit. I'm gonna make a custom exhaust for this car. I'm doing that in partnership with Total Flow Exhaust Systems. I have a lot of their bullet mufflers or bullet resonators, whatever you wanna call them. I'm also gonna do a clutch on the GS400. I'm gonna to go to a stage three six puck sprung clutch and an intercooler. So that all should be happening in the springtime. You basically only increase your intake air temperature at the math by about eight degrees. I've measured this. 
So whatever it is outside, it's about eight degrees once it crosses the math. Now, when it goes into a supercharged application where the air gets compressed, your temperatures are gonna go up, of course. And I don't have a measurement device on the Elate adapter at the moment to know what my intake air temperature temps are. That being said, I know they're high. I know that under boost scenarios, they're high and I can feel the difference on a non-intercooled car in the summertime. I'll be intercooling that in partnership with Travis at Elate, putting more of his awesome stuff into the vehicle, running a pump, getting some circulation going. So we've got lots of plans coming up and we'll get some good content to you. Hopefully you don't mind this project car stuff. I know a lot of you aren't Honda fans, or at least you don't own them because I have a huge Lexus fan base. But don't worry, that content's not going anywhere. And only mods that make a difference. And that's why when I say exhaust, a lot of you might have thought, well, exhaust on this car is not gonna make a difference. Actually it does. For the resonator is the choke point. So between the cat and the muffler, there's a, there's a resonator. And that is the known choke point on this car. So if you go to a 2.25 or so exhaust system setup, these actually respond really well to it. And if you put a higher flow resonator in that spot and leave the stock muffler there, that actually is a really good way to do it. So that's what we're gonna do.